Greetings, everyone. Hope all of you are having an absolutely fantastic day. Many times over the past month, you all have heard me talk about Officer and how much I love that class, which focuses on momentum and giving allies extra turns. There's nothing else quite like it, but the clear upgrade that keeps you on that same track is Master Tactician. This archetype has you focusing on building momentum, but now you can channel it into buffing party members or even yourself. Let's dig into all of the mechanics. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more CRPG videos. The characteristics of this archetype are agility, fellowship, ballistic skill, willpower, and weapon skill. Without question, your main focus should be pumping fellowship. Your secondary option depends on how your character deals damage or if you want to improve your defenses with dodge. The skills for this archetype are persuasion, Medikai, Lore Imperium, and Demolition. Of these, Persuasion is the clear choice to focus on with Lore Imperium being a close second since it comes up quite a bit during the game. Demolition is important but best handled by another character and you only need a few points in Medikai to use Medikits. This class automatically provides you with two features. The primary feature is Tactical Advantage, and you'll get a stack of this buff every time your party gains 5 momentum. You begin combat with a stack equal to your Fellowship bonus. The secondary feature is Press the Advantage, which allows you to empower your next attack to deal 4% additional damage for every stack of Tactical Advantage you have. Once this ability is used, you lose half of those stacks rounded up. By the way, it costs 0 action points to use this, and it represents a major shift from how you played as an officer. During those levels, more than likely you dealt very meager damage compared to other party members. Now you'll still probably have more issues hitting enemies than your peers, but if your attacks connect, you can absolutely devastate foes. At level 4 you get the ultimate ability Directed Firestorm, which lets you select a 3x3 zone on the field. All allies, including you, that have line of sight to any enemies within the zone make an immediate single attack against a random enemy that they can target with their weapons within the zone. This ultimate ability has never worked properly for me. I'll use it and my allies do nothing. I assume it will work properly in the main game, but it's still mediocre, especially compared to what you'll get from Officer or Marksman. The Desperate Measures version of this causes all allies that attack to suffer a negative 20 penalty to their ballistic and weapon skill while your fellowship is reduced by 40 until the end of combat. Uh, yeah, don't ever select this unless you absolutely know combat is about to end. At level 5 you get another action point which is really going to help your action economy. At level 2 you can pick your first of 3 abilities from a list of 6. The first option on the list is Inspire and it causes one target to gain plus one damage and an additional point of damage for every 10 stacks of tactical advantage but you lose half of the stacks rounded up. This effect stacks and lasts until the end of combat. If the target of this effect uses a heroic act before the beginning of your next turn, they regain 25 momentum. All the way around, this ability is fantastic and should be your first pickup. Lynchpin gives one target plus one resolve for every five stacks of tactical advantage and you lose half of the stacks rounded up. This effect stacks and lasts until the end of combat. Also, until the beginning of your next turn, instead of just getting 20% of momentum added as tactical advantage stacks, you gain a percentage amount equal to 20 plus 3 times your fellowship bonus. I like using Inspire first and then Lynchpin because even though the resolve bonus isn't going to be large, you will still gain significantly more stacks based on what I lines do so it's worth having this on all the time. Strong Point gives a target 2 temporary wounds and 1 additional temporary wound for every 2 stacks of tactical advantage but you lose half of the stacks rounded up at the end of your turn. Until the beginning of your next turn, whenever the target loses temporary wounds from damage, they gain momentum equal to the amount lost. By now you all know I am not really a fan of the medic skills and this is no exception so I will skip it. A sign objective allows you to mark an enemy and if it is killed by one of your allies before the beginning of your next turn, that ally gains momentum equal to 10 plus twice the allies resolve and they gain a plus 5 bonus to all characteristics until the end of combat. Characteristic bonuses aren't easy to come by, so this is definitely worth considering, but there's an ability a little bit later that I like more. 
Fervor deals direct damage to you equal to 20% of your maximum wounds in exchange for an amount of resolve equal to your stacks of tactical advantage, and it resets the cooldowns for Lynchpin, Inspire, and Strong Point. Until the end of your turn, these abilities can only target you. Those abilities all have a cooldown of one round, so basically you could cast them on an ally, then use this and cast them on yourself. I don't think that's worth it and would skip this. Finally, finish the job can be used on enemies which were attacked by your allies but not by you and have less than 50% of their maximum wounds left. This ability will let you do a single shot or strike against the character and the attack does not count towards your attacks per turn limit and deals half of the weapon's maximum damage along with an increase to damage equal to your ballistic skill bonus. I really like running Master Tactician as a sniper and in that build, this ability is definitely worth it because half a sniper round is still very impactful. If you are using lighter or one-handed weapons, then it might be better to select a sign objective instead. Starting at level 3, you will begin choosing talents. You can select 7 talents out of a list of 25. The first list of talents comes from your archetype, while there's also a second list of general talents that all characters can choose. I would strongly recommend in this screen you strictly focus on archetype talents. You get 4 opportunities to choose talents only from the general list, and that's when you should select some of them. The first talent is Hidden Advantage, and it allows all of your tactician abilities to work as if you had an increase in stacks of tactical advantage equal to your fellowship bonus. That number should be sky high, so without question, pick this up. Joint Offensive gives you a stack of tactical advantage for every enemy that you hit. Unless you are a marksman, most of the time you'll only be able to attack once per turn, and there are better ways to stack TA, so I would skip this. Nerves of Steel is triggered whenever you gain momentum and allows you to gain one point more. Whenever you lose momentum, you lose one point less. Interesting, but no, I think there are better options. Suppressive Fire causes enemies who are hit by you to have a 10% increased chance of hitting cover when shooting at allies. Again, you are most likely not going to be attacking more than once per turn, so you're not doing it regularly enough for this to be really useful. Against All Odds allows you to begin combat with additional stacks of TA equal to the number of enemies. Absolutely you want this as many fights will begin with 20 or more enemies, so you'll get a massive increase to TA. At the Edge allows you to deal 12% more damage to targets with less than 50% wounds, and you heal 20% more damage for targets with less than 50% wounds. You should pick it up late, but I kind of like this because it will help finish the job deal even more respectable damage. Reliance causes Lynchpin to only spend a quarter of your TA stacks instead of half. If you use that ability on a regular basis, this is definitely worth having. In the Hero's Footsteps is triggered the first time an ally uses a heroic act and it allows you to immediately gain an extra turn with a full amount of movement points and an amount of action points equal to a third of your fellowship bonus. Definitely pick this up, allies will use a heroic act almost every fight. Personal Involvement causes every enemy killed by you to increase your resolve by plus one until the end of combat. If you are more damage focused, this might make sense. My tactician is focused on buffing and doesn't kill that many enemies, so I skip this. Salvation is triggered when you use a med kit on an ally under one of your tactician effects and heals them for additional wounds equal to your fellowship bonus and the target's toughness bonus while also removing one extra injury without any test. I don't believe you need to have a medic on the party, but if you wanted one, this is definitely a fantastic talent to have. Tactical Respite is triggered when you reload a weapon and causes all allies within a 3 cell radius around you to also reload their weapons. If you use multiple ranged party members, and typically keep them close together, this is fantastic to have. I usually send Argenta and Ulfar on hunting missions nowhere near my tactician, so I skip this. Cost Effective causes grenades and medicates to cost one less action point. Throwing grenades for one action point is absolutely a nice option if you are typically close enough to the action to use them and you combine this with the Grenadier talent so you can still attack after throwing a grenade. Stand Resolute is triggered when you heal an ally and gives them plus one resolve until the end of combat and this bonus stacks a number of times equal to your fellowship bonus. Most likely you are not healing the same character enough times in a fight for this to be worthwhile so I would skip it. Support the Advance is triggered at the beginning of your turn if momentum is higher than 125 and allows your next burst or area attack to cost one less action point. If you typically use weapons capable of those types of attacks, this is definitely an option to consider. I prefer sniper rifles, so I skip this. 
Online coordination gives all allies a 25% bonus to dodge against friendly fire. They take 25% less damage from friendly fire, and friendly fire will deal 50% less additional damage with critical hits. This is fantastic if you love using burst and area attacks or grenades that will oftentimes impact party members. I like having Argenta and Ulfar launch burst attacks constantly, so I picked this up. Undisputed Advantage causes press the advantage to ignore cover and dodge. Again, press the advantage costs zero action points, so there's literally no reason to not use it every single turn and attack at least once. Without question, you should pick this up. Heroic Inspiration causes the first ability you use after the first heroic act was used in combat to cause zero action points until the end of combat. Again, your team will be using a heroic act almost every fight, so this is absolutely worth getting, although I would consider it more of a late level pickup. Logistical Superiority is triggered when someone on your team uses a consumable item or reloads a weapon and gives you two stacks of TA. For me, there are plenty of fights where neither of those things happen, so this wasn't worth taking, but it might make sense in your group. Comfort and Conformity heals an ally for every stack of TA that they grant you. Again, I don't think it makes sense to have a healer, so I skipped this talent. Stacking the deck is triggered when you spend TA on abilities and increases the critical damage you deal by 1% for every stack spent until the end of your turn. This is absolutely worth picking up because you should spend a ton of TA every single turn so the damage will really stack up. Dawn of Victory causes every critical hit you land to provide momentum equal to half of your resolve, and this works up to three times per turn. I am honestly not sure how often my tactician lands critical hits, but I don't think it's consistent, so I skip this. Unwavering Motivation causes your Inspire ability to grant an additional point of damage for every 10 stacks of TA until the beginning of your next turn. I use Inspire religiously, and this is definitely worth taking. Primary objective causes a sign objective to make the target suffer 7% more damage from any source until the beginning of your next turn. This is a fantastic upgrade, but since I don't use a sign objective, I skip it. With this added on, there's definitely the case a sign objective is a better option than finish the job, especially for bosses. Stronghold causes strong point to also grant half the amount of temporary wounds to the ally closest to the target. Again, I don't use strong point, so its upgrade doesn't move me. Finally, perfect finish allows finish the job to grant a 75% increase to your critical hit chance. It doesn't even need to be stated, this is a must have if you use that ability on a regular basis. That's all the information I have regarding Master Tactician Mechanics. Again, if you have any questions or feedback about this video, please leave me a comment below. Hope all of you enjoyed this video. Take care.